The day we're taking a look at these college basketball matches, which are happening on Wednesday, March 8, 2023, and giving you our team and total picks for today. Welcome back to High Stakes. Before we dive into our video, don't forget to subscribe and push that notification bell to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and make sure to watch it till the end so you don't miss any of our picks. Also check out our Patreon if you want access our premium picks. Our Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. You will find the link in description and comment section below. One more thing before we start, check out our new channel High Stakes Props and Parlays, where you can find our player props and parlay picks predictions. You will find the link in the description and comment section below. Boston College vs North Carolina Boston College played well against Louisville, even without Post, but that might make for a tougher task here. If Post doesn't play, it's going to be difficult for the Eagles to contain the Tar Heels, especially in the low block. North Carolina is 7th in the nation in rebounding, while Boston College is just 275th in that category this season. The Tar Heels are desperate for wins in order to try and earn an at-large bid to March Madness, and that starts with this one. Look for North Carolina to use their size and ability to crash the glass to take advantage of a shorthanded Boston College squad here. Our team pick is North Carolina Tar Heels. For the year, the Tar Heels are 70th in the nation in scoring offense, as they put up an average of 76.5 points per game on the season. North Carolina pulls down an average of 39.9 boards a contest, 7th in the nation, while dishing out an average of 11.9 assists per night. The Tar Heels are below average on the defensive side of the ball, ranking 220th in scoring defense, as they give up an average of 71.3 points per game. Caleb Love is leading North Carolina offensively, as he puts up 16.7 points per contest this season. Armando Backett, 16.5 points, 10.8 rebounds, RJ Davis, 15.8 points, 5.1 rebounds, and Pete Nance, 10.1 points, 6 boards, each average in double figures for the team this season. Leaky Black, Jalen Washington, Puff Johnson, Tyler Nickel and Seth Trimble are looked at to provide valuable minutes for coach Hubert Davis. North Carolina shoots 43.2% from the floor as a team this season. The Tar Heels knock down an average of seven three-pointers a game, while shooting just 30.9% from beyond the arc. North Carolina is well above average at the charity stripe, as they connect on 74.3% of their attempts, leaving them 80th in the country. Our team pick is over the total. LaSalle vs Duquesne. The Dukes blasted LaSalle on the road already this season. They outrebounded the Explorers and dominated the paint with a 30-point advantage. LaSalle will likely try to adjust in the rematch and bring help to the paint which will play right into Duquesne's hands. The Dukes are the top 3 PT shooting team in the 8-10 and should get quality looks from long range, both with LaSalle trying to protect the paint and the fact that the Explorers finished last in the conference in 3 PT defense. Duquesne's offensive firepower will be too much for LaSalle to overcome and I expect a relatively easy Dukes win. Building off of what I mentioned above, I expect Duquesne to have a great night offensively. They're taking on a LaSalle defense that's 258th in defensive efficiency, allowing 109.7 points per 100 possessions. In terms of defensive shooting, the Explorers are 186th, letting opponents hit 45.8% of their shots. If the Dukes are able to hit their open shots, they should be able to quickly run up points on the scoreboard. Speaking of pace, the Explorers are 164th, using 68.0 possessions per 40 minutes. Duquesne, on the other hand, is 139th, using 68.5 possessions. While not overwhelmingly quick, I still think we'll see an offensive onslaught considering the mediocre defenses. Let's root for offense and this one give me the over. Our total pick is over 147.5 points. Georgetown vs Villanova. These teams played once earlier this season with the Wildcats picking up a 77-73 home win, so this game is going to be interesting. However, Ken Palm's adjusted efficiency margin throughout the year has shown a gigantic difference, as Villanova is 66th in the sport with a plus 12.51 rating right now, while Georgetown is all the way down at 219th in the country with a minus 3.45 rating thus far. 
On the defensive side of the floor as of late, there is a bit of a difference as of late, as the Hoyas are allowing 80.8 points in their last five games, while the Wildcats are giving up 68.3 points in their previous four games. Go with the Villanova Wildcats to cover the spread and win this game to advance to the quarterfinals. Our team pick is Villanova Wildcats. These offenses have been struggling in terms of their points lately, with the Hoyas averaging 66.6 .6 points in their last five games, while the Wildcats are scoring 69.5 points in their previous four games. Villanova is going to slow down the pace of this game and are going to be methodical down the court as they are 328th in college basketball with 66.7 possessions per game, while Georgetown is at 84th in the nation with 72 possessions per game and limit the amount of total shots. All in all, go with the under in this matchup. Stanford vs Utah Late January saw Utah sitting pretty at 8-3 in the Pac-12 before going 2-7 straight up down the stretch. One of those losses, their first in February, came at home against Stanford. The Cardinal played strong on both ends of the court, shooting 53.1% while holding the hosts to 39.1% shooting and winning ATS as plus 5.5 underdogs. Utah won the first meeting between the schools back in December, 71-66, winning Austrian shillings as plus 2.5 underdogs. Just two games ago the Utes put up a paltry 49 points against a USC defense that sits in the middle of the Pac-12. Stanford boasts much stronger opposition to what Utah is looking to do. They've done well to keep big man Brendan Carlson off the boards, allowing him just 5.5 per game. The Utes have scored just over 60 points per game over their last five, while the Cardinals have pumped their offense up by almost eight points a game in that same stretch. Stanford is 4-1 at TS in their last five against a team with a winning record, and the underdog is 4-1 at TS in the last five games between these teams. Take the Cardinal. The two games played this season between these schools produced a combined average of 143.5 points per game. Over their last five games each they have combined to average 134.2 points per game, but that comes with the caveat that Utah dropped a 49-point stink bomb into that mix. Both teams have had very strong shooting nights against the other this season, with the Utes shooting 57.5% at Stanford and the Cardinals shooting 53.1% at Utah. These teams should be able to put up enough points against each other, even if they aren't shooting at these rates. The over is 5-1 in the last six meetings between these teams, including the two played this season. The over is also 6-1 in Stanford's last seven overall, and 4-0 in their last four versus a team with a winning record. Take the over 136 points. Minnesota vs Nebraska. Minnesota's nightmare Big Ten season will end on Wednesday. The Golden Gophers were 2-17 in conference play and will not be able to get past Nebraska in this tournament. Nebraska closed the season strong, they won five out of their last six, Walker made second team all Big Ten, and Tominaga went on a scoring spree. Nebraska has the talent to make this an easy win and advance into the next round. Nebraska ranks 60th in defensive efficiency, while Minnesota is only 241st in offensive efficiency. This is a big mismatch, as Nebraska should be able to shut down this gopher attacks. The Cornhuskers have been playing their best basketball lately, and that matters in March. Take Nebraska to win and cover. Derek Walker is a 6'9 senior power forward who does everything for the Cornhuskers. He was just named second team all-conference as he leads the team in points, 13.7, rebounds, 7.3, and assists, 3.8. Walker does his damage in the paint, as he is not a three-point shooter. Even when he isn't scoring big, Walker finds other ways to contribute, against Iowa he had 9 points, 12 rebounds and 8 assists. Kaisei Tominaga has been hoy lately, he has scored 20 or more in 6 of his last 8 games. Tominaga is a 6-2 guard out of Japan who is second on the team in scoring with 12.8 ppg and has the most made threes, knocking down 64 on the season. Tominaga was named honorable mention in the postseason awards. Sam Greasel is a 6-7 forward adding another 11.8 ppg and 5.6 rpg. Our total pick is over. Louisiana Tech vs Florida International. 
When looking at the defensive output in the last few regular season games, there is a large difference as Louisiana Tech is allowing 71.7 points in their previous three games, while the Panthers are giving up 85.5 points in their last four games. There is a bit of a difference in terms of their assist to turnover ratio throughout the year, as the Bulldogs are 281st in the country, with a 0.879 ratio, while the Panthers are 320th in college basketball, with a 0.814 ratio thus far. All in all, go with the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs to cover the spread. These offenses have been scoring the ball well throughout the last few games, as Louisiana Tech is averaging 66.2 points in their last five games, while Florida International is scoring 84.8 points in their previous four games. Both programs are moving the ball at a quicker pace than most, as the Bulldogs are 168th in the nation, with 70.3 possessions per game, while the Panthers are 40th in the country, with 73.5 possessions per game up to this point. Go with the over to hit in this game as it seems to be the best option here. Our total pick is over 141.5 points. UTSA vs Rice. Rice defeated UTSA in overtime in the first meeting between the two, which ended in a push, but the Owls lost a second by 5 points to the Roadrunners and failed to cover as 11.5 point favorites. Rice has lost each of its most recent five games and is just 1-4 at TS over that stretch. UTSA finished the regular season 3-2 straight up and was an impressive 4-1 Austrian shillings over that same span, which included its victory and cover versus Rice. The Owls are giving up far too many points at a 76.2 points per game, and opponents are shooting very well against the Owls' defense both inside and outside the three-point arc, hitting 46.5% of their overall attempts and 35.7% of their three-point attempts versus the Owls. Our team pick is the Roadrunners plus 5.5 points. The defense as of late are absolutely brutal as Roadrunners are allowing 90 points in their previous three games, while the Owls are giving up 87 points in their last four games. Both programs have been doing an excellent job at pushing the pace throughout the regular season, as Rice is 53rd in the nation with 72.8 possessions per game thus far, while UTSA is 91st in the sport with 71.8 possessions per game up to this point. All in all, go with the over as it seems to be the best option heading into their matchup. Our total pick is over 153.5 points. LSU vs Georgia. The Georgia Bulldogs have slowly built the foundation for a contending team thanks to a new coach and a new system. While the Bulldogs only had six wins in SEC play, it is a vast improvement from last season. They have lost five straight games, but three of those contests were against projected tournament teams. Georgia owns more quality wins than LSU this year, including wins over Kentucky and Auburn. Georgia should control the boards once again in this matchup, and I expect a better showing at the free throw line than in the first matchup. LSU is just 1-4 at TS in its last five games and don't have the firepower to keep pace in this one. Take Georgia plus 1.5 points. These teams have been struggling to move the ball consistently throughout the year, as Georgia is 161st in the nation with 70.5 possessions per game, while LSU is 270th in the sport with 68.2 possessions per game up to this point. These offenses have struggled to score as of late, with the Tigers averaging 70.7 points in their previous three games, while the Bulldogs are scoring 61.8 points in their last five games. Go with the under to hit as these offenses have been struggling and do not seem to be able to score too much. Our total pick is under 141.5 points. Oklahoma vs Oklahoma State. Both Oklahoma and Oklahoma State are defensive-minded teams and the advantage here goes to the Cowboys. Oklahoma State is allowing an average of just 66.8 points per game and holding opponents to a field goal shooting percentage of 40.3% and a three-point shooting percentage of 32.0%. In two meetings between the two during the regular season, Oklahoma State was victorious in both and also covered the spread in both winning by 16 points at home and by 10 points on the road. When playing on the road against Oklahoma, Oklahoma State held the Sooners to 35% shooting and 23% shooting from three-point territory in their home gym, which is quite a feat. Oklahoma has failed to cover the spread in six of its last seven head-to-head -head versus Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State has covered the spread in nine of its last 11 played during the month of March. 
our team pick is Oklahoma State Cowboys. Even though both of these teams are defense first, the total tends to finish over more often than not when they play. The total has finished over in 8 of Oklahoma's last 11. In addition, the total has finished over in 5 of Oklahoma's last 6 games, and in 9 of the last 11, that the Cowboys have played against a team from the Big 12 Conference. Both of the games played head-to-head -head between the two this season finished over as well. Our total pick is over. Virginia Tech vs. North Carolina State. Virginia Tech has the advantage of having played a game in the building already, but they were less than impressive in dispatching the Fighting Irish. The Hokies getting by Notre Dame by just three points has to be at least a bit worrying at this point, given the fact that they have more work to do. North Carolina State has had a week off to get rested and healthy as they try to rebound from those two straight losses to end the season. The Wolfpack do have terrific options on the offensive end, and they are a team that won't beat themselves by turning the ball over. North Carolina State is going to push Virginia Tech, and they put the game away late to find a way to advance. Our team pick is Wolfpack minus 2.5 points. North Carolina State dropped their second straight game to close the regular season, as they were knocked off by Duke on the road last Tuesday night. The Wolfpack enter this game 22-9 overall and 12-8 in the ACC, as they try to get back in the win column. Against Duke North Carolina State trailed by as many as 7 in the first half and by 4 at intermission. The Wolfpack struggled for most of the second half, trailing by 10, cutting the margin to 2, and then falling behind by 12 with 2.09 remaining. North Carolina State climbed within 3 with 34 seconds to play, but that was as close as they would get down the stretch. The Wolfpack shot 38.2% from the field, including 8 of 28 from 3-point range, and lost the rebounding battle 44-35 inches the game. Jarko Joyner led North Carolina State with 26 points and 8 rebounds in the loss. Our total pick is over. Oregon State vs. Arizona State. The Sun Devils took both games in the season series by an average margin of victory of 8.5 points per game, but lost both ATS. During the season Arizona State is 4-12 ATS when they are favored, and 3-5 ATS when favored by 9 or more. The Beavers are 3-3 ATS in their last six as underdogs by nine or more. Over each team's last five games, Arizona State has averaged a little over seven points more per game than Oregon State, but they've shot 0.8% better in that stretch. The last time these two teams met Oregon State had a four-point lead at halftime before their offense disappeared in the second. They can definitely hang with Sun Devils, though I won't go so far as to say they can win here. Oregon State is 10-3 at TS in their last 13 games at a neutral site, and the underdogs are 10-1 at TS in the last 11 meetings between these two. Take the Beavers plus 9.5 points. When these two last met back on January 28, they combined to score 125 points, going under by 4. Over their last five games each they have a combined average of 129.2 points per game. Oregon State has not scored 70 or more points in their last seven games, and even dropped 47 points versus Washington in that stretch. On the year, the Beavers have scored 52 or fewer points on seven occasions. Arizona State has averaged 63 points in its last two games, and has scored 70 or less in 10 of its last 11 games. Oregon State is shooting just 40.5% over their last five games, and Arizona State shot 41.3% in the same span of games, so neither team is scorching the twine. The under is 5-0 in the Beavers' last five games versus a team with a record above .600. The under is also 28-9-1 in the Sun Devils' last 38 games against a team with a record below .400. Take the under 129.5 points.